Hey, what's up, guys? Little man with a big opinion here. So, this one might be my last video before the start of 2023. It all depends on how I feel. I am driving back to uh, the Boy Scout camp that I work at to do our second session of camp. And I really don't make a lot of videos while I'm at camp because I'm working like 16 hour days. Uh, but this year, 2022, has been pretty good for me, prepping wise. Uh, you know, I like to round my year off with Christmas because I've hit that age where I'm not really asking for frivolous things. Uh, you know, for the most part, it it covers prepping uh, items that I just, I didn't have the time or the funds to cover. Uh, you know, I think the coolest thing that I got prepping wise is a, uh, a new flashlight. I'm, I'm very impressed with this light. Uh, and it's the Olight i5R. Pretty good size light. Uh, the battery in it is essentially a double A. Uh, it's slightly smaller, so it, you can't put a double A battery in it. Uh, but it's a rechargeable lithium ion. You plug a USB C into the battery itself, and you know you can charge your battery that way. Uh, you know, my brother has had the same battery in his flashlight for. Uh, over a year now uh, and he was stationed uh, down at the border building that fence for uh, Mr. Abbott and he used this flashlight constantly I, so I don't know the exact you know tech specifics on how long the battery lasts uh, but additional batteries for it are in the eight to ten dollar range and so I definitely plan on uh, adding more of those in the future and it'll be part of my monthly preps but the entire point of this video is you know hopefully you got some more prepping items uh, you know I, I say it constantly that prepping is a lifestyle and so uh, you know the uh, different gifts that you got uh, I hope they, you know, more round out your prepping. Uh, even if it was, you know, one one year I asked for a 50 pound bag of rice and I, I got it because back then a 50 pound bag of rice was like $14 and they're like, sure, I'll get you, I'll get you that. Uh, and it was just me at the time and, you know, that, you know, a 50 pound bag of rice is a significant amount of calories. Uh, but we're going into 2023, you know, typically every person that I know, you know, always sets New Year's resolutions. Uh, I think the most common New Year's resolution is, you know, lose weight. We're going to go work out. I really think that's when Gold's Gym and Planet Fitness makes the most money is the month of January. Probably the month of February too, because people... You know, I've quit going after the first two or three weeks, uh, and they just forget to uh, cancel their membership in February. But as a prepper, you know, we need to make our lists as well. They need to uh, facilitate around food, water, shelter, security, medical, and communications. So you know, whichever of those categories you are lacking the most in, uh, you know, that's what I'd put on the top of your 2023 list. So if it's communications, you know, go take a ham radio license class, uh, and, you know, get you a, a CB radio, ham radio, and use it, you know, start making those connections. Uh, you know, my grandpa, even during this little 
winter storm that we had. He was talking to a friend of his that he's got in Australia. He was talking to people up in the Midwest as well. It's a nice little trailer. Uh, and, you know, we didn't lose power, but he was just, you know, talking to them. You know, the very first thing he was asking these people was, you know, hey, what city are you in? What's your name? What's the temperature? Uh, because he's the kind of person that he'll he'll call in a 911 call if weather is really bad uh, and he's talking to someone on the radio and you know they abruptly you know lose connection with each other uh, and you know it's most of the time it's just for those uh, uh, you know just just check-ins and you know it's it's just a good thing to do uh you know if you're lacking in the medical field uh i the t one of the top things on my priority list this year is to get one of uh refuse medicals uh little ifax uh you know i i've been watching his channel since he had about 10,000 subscribers uh I like his no BS approach to prepping uh and as I get older I like the idea of spending more money to have something made here in the United States it's a pretty good setup uh but if you are on the more budget friendly option uh just looking up medical supplies that meet the standards that they need to meet uh you will save more money uh piecing out this kit uh and depending on the budget you have you know you might need to only spend 30 or 40 dollars a month and spend two or three months putting this kit together uh you know i've watched his video of it showing everything that's inside of it i've watched uh videos of you know much more advanced kits and you know I can safely say that the IFAC is a good start and it'll probably end up on uh, my plate carrier but I also plan on making you know like a full combat medic loadout and I've I've budgeted and priced out the kit uh, and it's well over a grand to get every single little piece that I want. Uh, but you also have to keep in mind that a complete, you know, combat medic loadout is good for treating a dozen plus people. Uh, you know, the IFAC is an individual first aid kit. It's good for one person. Sometimes you got extra things to, uh, you know help out a second person but that's medical is my you know my big 2023 prep uh, if food is on the top of your list or water is on the top of your list it's probably because you're a fairly new prepper uh, the big thing that I would say to that is you have to break that down into short-term goals. Don't don't ever think about putting food away as a I need six months of food or I need a year's worth of food. Uh, think about it in one one week increments, uh, and you can break it down even further into seventy-two hour increments. Uh, because I think that is one of the most overwhelming parts of putting food away, and you want to put food away the right way. Uh, you know, if for, so, part of the right way is putting stuff away that you consume on a daily basis. Uh, when it comes to your dinners, three to five of your dinners per week should be something that you consistently consume. You know, at my house, it's pork chops, biscuits, and gravy. Uh, we typically make like a spaghetti or some sort of hamburger helper uh, and then in our freezer we meal prep out crock pot meals 
So we will make like a five quart or whatever chili or chicken and rice or different things like that put them in one gallon bags you know flatten them out freeze them and you know put one in the fridge whoever's the last person to leave for work dumps it in the uh, crock pot throws it on load we've got dinner ready uh, but three to five of your meals are something you eat regularly and your working pantry should be anywhere between one month and three months of those meals. You're always preparing and consuming uh, the oldest thing in there. These meals are gonna last, you know, one to two years uh, just inside of your pantry. So you could, in theory, work your uh, working pantry up to a year pantry where you're, the oldest thing you're eating is at the one year mark and if you know you still do your shopping weekly and you are replacing these meals and putting them in the back uh, if you are worried about water you know this this one's tricky to try to give a general idea to everyone uh, because water takes up a lot of space. Uh, inside of my house, I have four six gallon containers, uh, two or three five gallon, and one four gallon container. Uh, and that's really all the closet space. You know, my, my wife likes the preps to be hidden away and so that she can decorate the house and make it look look nice uh, so I couldn't really add much more water storage inside of the house but I have one 55 gallon container that is stored outside with plans to add to that as well uh, but I also live in a three bedroom two bath house some people live in bigger houses some people live in smaller houses some people live in apartments uh, and so water storage, I would shoot for a week's worth of water storage. Uh, and that is a minimum of one gallon per person per day. Uh, depending on the size of your dog, I do half a gallon of water for each dog for each day. And then I do a gallon and a half of water for my cats because I have six of them. Uh, and they consume a fairly good amount of water. Uh, so, the biggest thing when it comes to having water in your home is if you don't have a just abundant amount of space that you can put like one of those 2,500 gallon water storage, <coughs> then you need a active way of you know retrieving more water uh, whether that is a creek or a pond on your property uh, whether you have a rain catchment system with your gutters uh, or you've got a well you need you know a way to replenish your water source uh, and on top of replenishing the water source, you also need a way to make it drinkable. Uh, and so, you know, simple, cheap method is getting a, you know, a handful of Sawyer Minis. It's just going to take quite a bit of time to, uh, you know, if every day you're having to put the water that you need to consume through Sawyer Minis, uh, you know, the amount of time that you're spending on that task is going to take, uh, take up a good part of the day. And it just gets higher. The more people you add into the equation, the more animals and livestock that you add into the equation. Uh, and so, you know, just, just think about it in that sort of way. Uh, you know, that's where you want to start looking at your gravity 
uh, water purifiers. A lot of them, you know, have a two to five gallon capacity. That way you just pour, pour the water in and, you know, gravity does its thing. It goes to the filter and there's some sort of spigot on the bottom that, you know, makes it drinkable. Uh, what a friend of mine did was continued the gravity system. You know, he's got a, a Berkey. Uh, and I think he's got the two and a half gallon one. And so he just has a hose connecting to the water spigot that goes down into a 25 gallon storage tank that he's got a uh, one of those little electric water pumps on that it can come out of his sink it uh you know it's it's easy for him to use it that way and instead of him you know doing two and a half gallons at a time you know he'll fill it up you know let it do its thing fill it up again let it do its thing until the bigger tank is full once the bigger tank is full then he fills it up you know he's got just like a little a quick release that that turns into you know additional two and a half gallons of you know, drinkable water that's one way to think of it uh if you know shelter isn't on the top of your list then it's probably when it comes to like a bug out location uh or having bug out gear to leave in case things get dicey uh so you're looking at tents, tarps, uh, sleeping systems. Uh, if you have a bug out location that you can build permanent things on, you know, at the bare minimum, get you one of those, you know, 10 by eight sheds that you can put, you know, almost like sailor style bunks in it. The only thing it needs to do is keep you out of the elements. Uh, and you know then you can work your way up from there i really don't think security is going to be on the top of very many people's list because when it comes to just americans in general or preppers in general uh, they typically tend to lean very heavy on the idea of oh i'll buy a bunch of guns and bullets and mad max my way through the apocalypse uh but you know, my one caveat to that is <clears throat> you could have 20,000 rounds of 5.56, five, but if you're not, you know, training at least one weekend monthly, if not more, uh, then all you're doing is, you know, building out an awesome loot room for someone else. You know, the person that only has three or 400 rounds of 5.56 five, uh, because he's buying 200 a month and going through 150 in training you know I'll lean towards him being the victor over the guy that's got 20,000 rounds sitting there doing nothing uh, and then just to like cap off all of this I you know electricity kind of gets its own category because it can well it's not really its own category it benefits all of these categories uh, if you need any medication that needs to be kept cold then you should probably invest in you know some solar if you know you want your communication to be able to work because the grid's gone down then you should probably invest in some sort of generator uh, if you, you know, for medical reasons, you know, say you need a sleep app or, you know, someone's sick, so, you know, it'd be better to cool them off and give them a fan or use an electric blanket, electricity. Uh, you know, water. I went to visit an old Vietnam vet friend uh, that, that worked at the Boy Scout camp with me and he lives out in the hill country and his well 
it was saying it was like 800 feet deep. Uh, he has the ability to hand pump it, and that just takes forever. Uh, but he's got a 100 watt panel out there with a little, you know, golf cart deep cell battery hooked up to a, a 12 volt water pump, and he did that because he's older and he doesn't want to have to pump water if he loses electricity you know it's the way the system is set up is if he lose power from the grid it automatically starts pulling it off the battery and it's probably just the different generation that he's from but you know that's that's a prepper thing to do that's a common sense thing to do and that's something that me and my brother were talking about setting up at our campsite out at the farm is dig us a well you know go get us a small deep cell battery a water pump and a solar panel that way we can just quit carton five gallon water jugs out there when we go camping uh, because the water bubbling out of the ground uh, in the middle of the creek bed that's not really a spring but it's kind of a spring uh, you know, you can, it's, it's only enough to fill up, you know, like a half, half quart of water at a time. So, you know, electricity is a wonderful thing for that because it removes some of your manual labor. Uh, and then also, you know, just the last big thing, uh, for, you know, having ways to generate electricity is going to be power tools and entertainment I've got an old cell phone uh, that was 128 uh, gigabyte phone that I wiped everything off of it except for what it needs to run uh, I kept Google movies and YouTube on it and I've downloaded probably 40 movies onto this device and it's a form of entertainment and as long as it doesn't crap out then I've got a way to watch you know not every movie that I'd like to watch but more than what other preppers are probably thinking about uh you know, one of the next things on my list is getting a VCR and one of those little 22 inch monitors or TVs uh, because I have I have quite a few of VHS tapes and entertainment I think is very important uh, you know one of the biggest things that stood out to me from The Walking Dead was when they were in the prison and they had access to generators uh, like every Thursday night or whatever, they play one movie, and that's a huge boost to morale. Uh, just entertainment in general, uh, and electricity plays a big part in that. Uh, myself and several other people in my family, uh, we have a pretty large collection of tools. We don't have every single tool in the world, but we also don't have every single manual version of every tool in the world because, no, uh, you know, I would much rather, you know, charge up cordless drills uh, or plug in a plug-in drill with a battery generator of some sort. Uh, then try to do all of this by hand. Uh, so that's another reason electricity is important. But I think this video is going to end up being a little too long anyway. So with that being said, what are your individual uh, prepping goals for 2023? Uh, have you thought out your plan on how you're going to accomplish these goals? Uh, you know, if you look up the SMART goal acronym, uh, I think it's very, very helpful. Uh, you know, specific, 
measurable. Uh, I don't remember what the A was. Uh, relatable and time bound. Uh, it might be attainable, but I also think it, I think it is attainable. Uh, but essentially, what that's you know, it gives you the groundwork of accomplishing these goals that you set forth for yourself. Uh, and then, so the very last thing that I tell you is set your goals, set your goals high. Don't set the bar low and accomplish them in the first month. Uh, because if you aim high and you fall short, uh, it's way better than aiming low and meeting your goal, you know, even within the first six months of the year. Uh, so, that being said, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you enjoy what I'm doing with the channel, please consider subscribing. And lastly, if you have a friend or family member that would benefit from these discussions, then share the channel with them. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.